Welcome to Mind Pump. This is the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is a Q&A episode where we answer fitness and health questions. But at the beginning of the episode, we do a introductory portion. It's about 35 minutes long. It's where we talk about current events. We have some fun conversations. Sometimes we talk about our sponsors. So I'm going to give Sometimes you tarantulas. a breakdown of this whole episode, okay? So we start out by talking about one of our our partners, Mir. Mir made a new Dawn Patrol camp cup. You can bring this camping. It's great. It keeps your beverages warm or cold. Um, but also, uh, because of its Earth Day and COVID-19, they have gone 100% carbon neutral, and they are now climate neutral certified, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, if you want to check out their products and get the Mind Pump discount, go to mir.com. That's M-I-I-R.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 25% off. Then we talked about health clubs and their reopening plans. In particular, we talked about the Bay Club and what they're going to be doing. Then we talked about Tom Cruise and Elon Musk. They became friends, apparently. This is yeah. weird. I talked about a Spanish beach doing something very stupid to disinfect their beaches. Uh, then we talked about a disinfectant that can be placed on surfaces and makes them impervious to uh, bacteria and viruses for years. Kind of interesting. Then we talked about Adele, her weight loss, and the idiots that came out and said that that was uh, body shaming somehow. Um, uh, these people still exist. And then Justin very eloquently talked about a tarantula, a tarantula's pet, and uh, it was confusing, mm. but we figured it out. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And then we got into the questions. The first question, um, this person wants to know, how you train someone that only wants to work out one to two days a week? So we talk about how to design a workout around that. The next question, this person wants to know what we think about farmer walks. So farmer walks where you hold dumbbells or a trap bar, and you walk, and it's usually loaded. Uh, there are some benefits to it, so we highlight it in that part of the episode farmersonly.com the next question was about uh this person wants to know how you when when you do find a balance between nutrition activity resistance training what happens when you add more cardio does that throw things way off and the final question this person wants to know what strategies we have when we are trying to study a certain topic we think you're going to like that part of the episode especially also there's only three days left 72 hours left for the no BS six pack formula program, 50% off sale. So this is a ab and core workout program only. It's a complete workout program designed to develop the midsection so that the abs and the obliques are more visible, even at higher body fat percentages. Believe it or not, if you develop the muscles of the abs, you can see them more, even if you have higher body fat percentages. This is a phenomenal strategy. Well, this program is designed all around that. It is a full two-phase program with exercise demos and instruction all in the program. It's 50% off. That means the price is only one payment of $28.50. Mm. That gives you lifetime access. By the way, you could get the program, do it for a full month. If you don't like it, we'll return the $28.50 to your account. So Get those shredded summer abs. It's guaranteed. So here's how you get the program. Go to nobs6pack.com. That's N-O-B-S, the number six p a c k dot com. Use the code no bs fifty. That's n o b s five zero. No space for the discount. Dude, that's a that's a so that's the Mir's new camp cup. It's a, it's artsy. Dawn Patrol camp cup. Dawn Patrol camp cup. I Dawn like Patrol. it. Dawn Patrol. Dawn Patrol. They have good uh, good designers uh, over at Mir. Yeah. Well, uh, they, well, they like the last time they did it with like a like a tattoo artist. So there's always somebody they partner. Smart. Yeah, yeah. Know who they partner with? Did no, they're always. It looks cool. Did you see what they're, cool. they're doing for honor of Earth Day? Yeah. No, what is it? Uh, one hundred percent carbon carbon neutral and climate neutral certified. What the hell does that mean? It's good for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> No, what it means is that they, all you need to know. What it means is the company is not going to add more carbon, according to the testing of this the certification. They're they're neutral. They're not adding more to the environment than they're they're taking out. Is whatever. that common that most companies do? That manufacture is that is that is that is that? I'm assuming that's why that's a big deal. Um, mm. Some companies definitely produce more carbon than other companies for sure well i not more this is saying it's neutral they're not producing i any don't know how they would make it neutral yeah. i don't necessarily get that um so but i do know that the the certification process to get climate neutral certified it's vigorous and they go in and, and you in order to get it you have to be one of the cleaner companies 
I think it's that, and then what else are you pro- potentially putting back in that's good? Would that be have something to do with it, like too? Like, maybe because you plant trees? Right, right. Oh, uh, mm. yeah. That's how you become neutral, right? Because it's inevitable yeah. if you're manufacturing something, so right? So it's not you're- just that they don't have an opinion on either one. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> that's I'm Switzerland what it, that's here. I don't know what you guys are talking yeah. about. What's your opinion on, neut- on carbon? Yeah. Yeah. Neutral. We gotta, yeah, sorry. We got to reach out to our guy. They're, he's always forward thinking, man. They're always doing something. I can't even keep up with how much they give back. I think it's pretty cool what Brian's been doing over there for quite some time. Totally. It's part yeah. of the reason why we partnered with him. Dude, so you know how uh, because of what's going on, everybody's doing like Zoom conferencing call, conference calls and yeah, Zoom yeah. classroom yeah, and yeah. everybody's working from home or whatever. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And have you heard of the, the you know, you've heard the stories, right? Where like the, the, the employee in the conference doesn't know that this mic is on, right? And they're taking a dump. Oh, or something like that, or yeah. people are you know walking around naked in the background, or people's kids screaming. Well, there was this reporter, the Spanish reporter, that was doing a live you know journalism thing on on, on his YouTube channel or whatever this live uh, you know reporting thing, and in the background, his mistress. No. Yeah, dude, she's walking around. She walks by naked. What? And he gets caught cheating on his wife <laughs> on camera. What? Yes. What Come an on, asshole. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a what a jerk. Yeah. No, he gets wow. caught cheating on camera. Try getting around. What a way to find out, huh? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, do you, how do you deny that? Yeah. yeah. Wife's home watching it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, oh, I saw your broadcast oh. today. You it's got like, something to tell me? Kids, you- change the channel. We got to watch Dad real quick. Okay. I yeah. love watching his new stuff. She puts it on. Yeah. Now you don't know who you don't know who Earl Thomas is, but he's uh, he's a safety that plays uh, for the Ravens, and he's a stud. And he's he- a safety for the Ravens. <laughs> Stupid. Sorry. Yeah. So, did you see the breaking news on him that. last night? No. Oh, so he he got uh, so his his wife uh, was arrested for uh, putting a gun to his head. Now she took the magazine out, but didn't realize there's a round in the chamber. That's oh. why. That's why she's in trouble. Ooh. But I guess she walked in on him and his brother naked with two other mistresses. Mm. That, wow! Yeah, that just hit the news yesterday. Wow! Bro- it's not brotherly wor- love. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? What's you, that? To yeah. kill someone because they cheated on you? What a stupid! thing. I don't think so. From what the report was saying. Her intentions weren't to do that. It was just to scare him, which is why I think she pulled the magazine out. Oh, oh he'll never cheat on me again because I scared him with a gun. Yeah. Like, what a stupid... Yeah, but when you're in the heat of the moment... like I'm not... By the way, I'm not like justify i'm playing devil's yeah. advocate with you right yeah. now that come on like you you, you got to know that sure you walk in on your wife and he, with some dude yeah she, like she you was think, scorned it's not like you stop and you think logically for fucking 20 minutes yeah. like oh how should i handle this yeah. and what's gonna work wasn't what's my it left outcome? eye lopez that like burned down her husband's house or whatever did she really day? yeah oh tlc was the they oh, were yeah. great fiery then. Yeah, i love them <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the way to reno Watch you can out. see they're still touring the two of them are really yeah yeah they're just T- tlc yeah chasing waterfall still yeah i Wow. I, saw a, I saw a billboard They're last time we were now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's messed up, up man. I that's, you can't have you. the L. She's not there I'll anymore. You. you know what I'm saying? I was a big fan of that. Are R. you R. guys? Are you guys watching all the news right now on just uh, all these gyms that are slowly starting to open up and the regulations yeah, and what's dude, happening? Dude, this is not going to be good. It's wild. So man. Bay, bay clubs. Let me find it. It's real like post apocalyptic uh, kind just, of feel. It's just they're opening up with these new with and they're they're releasing kind of their strategies like how we're going to reopen. So Bay Clubs, this was in, in, in a local uh, you know, news outlet, Bay Clubs talked about what they're going to be doing and how they're going to reopen. They're going to be reopening, so they're going to be taping off 10 by 10 pods, so 10 by 10 spaces that are considered workout pods, and you're going to be reserving these 10 by 10 uh, workout spots, uh, pods. The, they're going to be limiting their capacity at 25%. So se- so seventy five percent less people yeah. now can use their facility. There's no way that what lasts. a strange vibe that's going to be yeah. for for group classes like yoga. There's going to be ta- taped boxes on the floor, so you have to stay in that little segment. Hmm. You cannot bring your own mat. Um, there, I mean, the the sports courts are going to be repurposed with cardio equipment, so they have room for you know spacing spacing them way out. Gyms are just not that profitable to start with. Mm-hmm. There's been a misconception forever in our space that they're just money makers. Yeah. They're not. They are not mass. And there's always exceptions to the rule. There's models or there's franchises or there's bubbles that happen, you know, mm-hmm. curves, for an example. Mm-hmm. Sure, if you got in on the front end of curves, you might have got rich being the first, you know, 
500 people that got into that mm -hmm. business. But I mean, look where it's at today. Yeah. So there's bubbles right now that have happened in our space that are extremely popular. They're trendy right now. People are making decent money off of them. But long term wise, gyms in, Dude, in general just don't profit a ton of money. They interviewed the, the COO of 24 Fitness, Carl Sanft. And they said, so what do you think about like when they reopen and stuff? And so this is a typical, you know, you got to, you got to have the marketing phrase, right? Oh, of course. So yeah. he says, it's going to be a <laughs> reimagined experience. Reimagined. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad laughing. Imagine me and you. <laughs> uh, he can't come out and say. You can't. Yeah, we got to separate right now. He can't come right out now. and be like, yeah, it's going to suck. Yeah. It's going to be way Give different than it was Now, do you, okay, now we were there really young. Justin was there young too, but not as young as you and I. Do you remember when uh, that started to come together for you? Like just the, the corporate bullshit. Like I remember, you know, being on the morning emails in my like early 20s and like so bought into the company and like <laughs> you would get a message like that and you're like, and you would spin it to your staff. Like, yeah, yeah. dude, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. This new thing we're going to do now and people are going to be, we're going to save the, like you'd go down and pitch it like yeah. that. So here's the new comp plan. Yeah. 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 So imagine yeah. fitness. Reimagined. Now yeah. reimagine it. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's what it's that's what it's going to be like. No, I mean, you know, terms make a big difference. The way you yeah. I mean, politics does this exceptionally well. Anytime a anytime a new bill is passed, whatever the name is, it does the opposite. That's that's like a rule of thumb. Well, what Justin just so said like is like the Patriot Act opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Opposite. Exactly. Anything that says freedom, opposite. You know, every single, yeah, yeah, every single yeah, yeah. time opposite. you read it. Well, what Justin said is a is a is a great point too. Is that that when they would roll out comp plans? I mean, I oh remember. Yeah. So I was there. You had to spin that. Like, I was there every for, time. Oh yeah, I was there ten years, and in the ten years, I had to to hand out to my staff eight different comp plans. So basically, almost one a year. And by about the you know third one, I think I I started to piece it together. Like, wait a second, this is not ever in the favor of my staff. And the, it's it, obviously once you really understand business and and scaling something to that magnitude, a comp plan change is always in the favor of the company. Yeah, they, that's, that's an the, easy way for them to 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 save money. Right. Yeah. But it. but when they would put it out, they would position it as an opportunity for you to make more money. Right. So if you've learned like to create new positions, <laughs> yeah. you know, that you could like, uh, you know, advance to, yeah. we're going to pay you less hourly, but look, if you sell this much more, you actually could right. make more money per year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, Try harder. I, you know, I, I used to irritate that crap out of me when they would do that, but well, I wasn't there for nearly as long as you were. I don't know how the hell you lasted. As well, long as you, you know, did. as much I know. as I, I talk trash, I, I liked it. I loved I loved work. It's, I still today sometimes miss it. I mean, I would. Yeah, that was a fun environment. I would never replace it for what we've created for ourselves here. I mean, and I've I've never loved something as much as uh, as what we get to do now. But I did I did love the atmosphere. It fed mm -hmm. right into my personality. Just I was around lots of people. It was a team environment. Mm -hmm. It was competitive. Lots of energy. Everybody that's coming into that place, either working there or working out, are there to better themselves. And so that environment, I just, I ate it up, dude. I loved it. And I remember as the comp plans always got worse and worse. And, and I always found a way. I was the, the small percentage of, even though the comp plan got shittier, I found a way to still make more money, uh, knowing that it probably hurt the other 90%. And so I was okay. Um, and I always said, man, if you would have to pay me probably close to double what I was making there to convince me to leave. Yeah, and that after was, a while, it's like a system and you're just there and you're doing it. You're enjoying it. Yeah. It's not super hard. No, not at all. Learn what you're yeah, doing. Shit, yeah, shit. By, by year five or six, I, I was, I had really, you know, got comfortable with what I needed to do mm -hmm. to be successful and, and felt good. And, you know, and in, in my area, I built a name for myself. So yeah, no, it was a, it was a, it was. I a used fun to have job. fun. I used to have a lot of fun. I remember one time to to try to sell more apparel because you know in the in the front of the club we'd sell workout clothes. To sell more apparel, I had a couple of my sales guys put on the girls uh, like workout apparel, and I'd make them go take an aerobics class nice. or whatever. And then we'd make announcements. You know, go to the you know, take the class and watch Paul wear. You know, pink well, you were whatever. you were at Hillsdale when they did that. Did the uh, the runway show, didn't they? Wasn't that when you were there? Or was that not when you were there? That was a big deal. Did that I was, do a runway show? They did like a they modeled all. They turned the lights out and then no, I didn't. down the walkway. They had all the all the staff come through and like uh, mo yeah, that was smart. It was no, clever things. Yeah. You back then you could do that. Like now, liability, turn the lights off, you get sued, all this bullshit. You uh -huh. know. But those are the days that you could do creative yeah, stuff. The, yeah, the, the whole space is going to be very interesting to watch over the next couple of years. It's funny this morning. Uh, well, we've been talking just amongst ourselves about investing, you know, our own personal money and 
when you when you're you know when you're trying to invest, I think it's really smart. By the way, I'm not an investment expert, so just this is my own opinion. But I think it's smart to kind of stay in your lane because it helps you with your temperament. You know, because if I invest in in, a, in fitness companies, I can weather the storm more, knowing what's happening with the trends. And so, we've been talking about investing in, in companies like Peloton, right? Peloton is a it's a publicly traded company, and we figure, God, it's probably gonna they're probably gonna do well because more people are gonna work out at home. Less people working out at gyms, and so we've been talking about this for a while. And we were we were all talking about getting shares like the other day. None of us did. Wake up this morning, they're up like you know, five <laughs> or ten dollars, right? So I'm all pissed off, uh, and I, I said, to, and I should have known better. This yeah. is the, the worst yeah. person. The you worst woke person up the sleepy bear to tell this to yeah. is Adam, right? Yeah. So I send a you know text. And I'm like, damn it, we fucking. We if he had hair, it'd be gone again. Yeah. We should have acted <laughs> yeah. right, and then yeah. I just set him off, dude. He's he conference calls everybody, voice <laughs> on, the, on the phone. I was on, hella mad. We didn't buy this. Ah! I come no. stomping oh, no. down the stairs yeah. this morning. No, bro. Adam's like, Adam's like, yeah. remember the stock. Remember, this is the number one rule in investments in the stock market. Buy low, say hi, sell, sell high, right? Great. The market's already up. It's already got up. Yeah. Adam's like, put all the money just, in. Just buy it buy now. Buy it now. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. I'm like, whoa, dude, calm down. So calm mad, down. bro. So oh, mad we were but so mad. I, but I do think Peloton is is a, is going to be a good, an interesting, I mean, this is, my own, again, my own personal investment, but I think this will be an interesting place to look. Well, cause because it's, they're a tech company, right? Like, for the most part. So they, they have a good... Uh, I think the infrastructure for that business is sound in terms of like what they're trying to to create, like this new platform mm -hmm. of how to create the experience of it. Like tech companies need to be the ones driving that, but also, you know, the fitness element of it is it's definitely going to evolve more into the home uh, at Dude, home their, type training. Their bike sales sixty six percent went up. 66% wow. increase in bike Which sales. The, you know, and, and those and, are expensive, those bikes. Yes, they are. And of course, a, a, a lot of that's driven from COVID, right? Of yeah. course, there was yes. a bunch of people that had probably been on the fence for a long time that were considering getting one. And because now they're stuck at home, they, I mean, I have a handful of people very close to me. That's exactly what happened. So that to me isn't the major indicator. They've just established themselves in a space that is, I don't think, is going to go away anytime soon. Mm -mm. No, it's going to evolve. It's going to grow. Yeah, right. And for sure. the only real competitor they have right now is SoulCycle. SoulCycle's done their bike. They have a very strong hold on that the cycling community already. So if you are already in love with that brand. So they're going to have they're going to have a piece of the pie too, but it's still brick and mortar. Like that's their specialty, which is right. going to take a bit for them to transition. Right. I mean, but I could argue with that that that's also why it'll do well because they've already established a strong community. They have a strong community and then they pivot into something else. It's just True. like us. True. They, we, they got the fans that Yeah, if we were to pivot into anything them. related to fitness, even yeah. if it has nothing to do with what we currently do right now, I would think that we would do okay because we have a community already. True. So Soul Cycle has done that. They will own a piece of the, the pie, but I just think that Peloton is is so far ahead of everybody in that space that they will be competitive for years to come, and, and that's also, why I like that And pie. they're also not just going to be the bikes. They're going to offer other... Yeah, they already do. Right, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's, they're going to keep growing with that, and if you think... if it, Like, again, this is our space, right? We're in the fitness space, and so I think our opinion is much more than just a guess. I think we, we have a pretty educated opinion. Of course, we could totally be wrong, but I think in the near future, I don't know what it's going to look like in 10 years or five years, but I think in the next year, it's I, I can pretty confidently say that gym attendance will be lower. That's mm. my that's my my confident guess or estimation. Yeah. But I don't think less people are going to be working out. I think what you're going to see is more working out at home. And mm. so company tech companies like Peloton, it's it feels like a smart place to go a smart buy i don't see there's i don't see them slowing down yet I th in fact i think they're going to start going up as we continue to well see yeah you're, you're making fun of me of saying buy 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 but that's how i feel i feel like it's not um and this is where i'm not i'm not an expert at, at reading uh, the market and watching and trying to time a perfect buy right this is just Long this term. yeah this is our space and it's like i would still bet that where it's at even with the spike today It'll be still much higher than that a year, two year, three year from now. It's mm -hmm. it's a buy and hold in my opinion. It's not something that I I'm speculating on. Oh, this is the perfect place to buy it at, and then and then try and it's sell a, it. The market's so interesting too. Some shares just make no sense. Like Tesla just does not make any sense. Why it's so damn expensive? Even Elon yeah. says in his own tweets, <laughs> my, "This shares are too expensive. <laughs> this is too damn much." Did you see Elon, uh, who he just partnered with? No. 
Tom Cruise. Why? What? I'm going to tell you, dude. Tom Cruise has been making moves, man. Like, I brought him up not too long ago, obviously, because of Top Gun and how he's trying to do all these revolutionary ways to film uh, being up in the air with uh, these fighter jets and everything and, like, bringing in that IMAX experience, like, r- legit inside the cockpit. Well, he's taking it to a whole nother level by now partnering with SpaceX and NASA. And, and they're they're already in plans of, of shooting an action movie in space. Wow. Like legit Mr. Space. Scientology himself. I, I, was just, I was just going to say, I, I mean, think Tom Cruise just wants to try to get closer to Lord Xenu. He, he just wants to go to planet Xenu or whatever. Yeah, or build, <laughs> build his own Westworld. Right. I don't know. That yes. might be the, something, might be. man. He's making moves. You guys saw Elon had a kid. Did you guys see that? I didn't. Did, oh, you didn't see what he named I, his kid? Yes. No, I did. Okay. How do you pronounce that? Because it's, it's like. Oh really? Yeah, it is. But the, but the <laughs> way he, serious? I think it's Kyle. It's Chad. But the yeah, way, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, like, what the fuck? Why but, are all these like but, little? But the way symbols. he named him, he used all these yeah symbols yeah. that are you know. It looks like an A that goes into an E, and then like I don't know what they're called. I know uh, really smart people know, and so I think if it's you like pronounce like alien them all, hieroglyphics, yeah. you know, it's I like, haven't come on, seen dude. it. Pull yeah. it up, Doug. I want to see His what his name's like. Kyle. Come on, I think dude. it's Kyle. I think if you pronounce it, it's Kyle. Oh come on! It's like remember when Prince changed his name to that symbol? Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah. Either they call him Elon's son. Elon's well, son. Okay, was that because he was getting himself out of a record contract though? I think there was something behind that. Yeah. Why he did that. So yeah. he was able to kind of like get bypass some kind of loophole. I tell you what, dude, I so bad. I'm not like this normally. This is not at all the kind of personality that I have or who I am, but I really want to be Elon's friend. Oh, uh, <laughs> he's I just, dude, I just, and he just, just like was on great. Rogan again. I I I can't wait to listen to You don't dude. think he would be awkward? I, I, bro, I love weird people. Of course people. he'd be awkward. I mean, we all like weird people, but to, as a friend Huh? Yeah. I think he'd be great. Nah. I would love to sit down. Bro, that's, it just it doesn't whether you believe in God or not, it just doesn't work out that way, dude. You get you get it's all like a one way conversation. You get all this brilliance, you get social awkwardness. That's just yeah. part of it, dude. Yeah, it dude, just I, comes with the cards. It's like you, know, you, yeah. you don't get to be that brilliant and then also hella cool. Yeah, but yeah. I, well, I'm not gonna go like. What do you mean cool? Like, imagine sitting like, down with him, smoking a joint, and be like, "Hey, man, what do you think about yeah. uh, flying cars?" Yeah, it probably just, would feel as awkward ideas as that, Adam. It would probably feel as awkward it. as that interview did. That interview yeah. was great. It was uh, awkward. You think yeah, so? It yes, it was. It was great because everyone got to see him get high, but it was awkward. Yeah, see, there's the name right there. Doug, can you you can't expand that, can you? It's like it's those letters right there. Watch. What does that say? It's like X A E A dash twelve A twelve. And that's Kyle. That yeah, means Kyle. I think, <laughs> how do you get Kyle out of that? I don't know. Like, I, well, seriously, my mind's blown. If that means Kyle, yeah. Somebody. What, hey, what, what a what a way to make sure your kid gets beat up in elementary school. I know. Really guarantee right there. Bro, way he, to go, Dad. If he takes after his yeah. dad, ain't nobody gonna beat him up. He's gonna be yeah. all. You know, he'll probably be half cyborg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the, the, he's already preparing him to be a cyborg. I'm sure he's gonna neural link him and everything oh, right away. God. Oh, God. Did you guys see our buddy uh, James Smith, Joe DeFranco's partner? Did you see what happened to him? No. Oh, you guys didn't see that? I think he posted in our, I thought it was in our forum. Maybe it was just on his Facebook feed. He uh, ordered a bunch of equipment online, mm-hmm. got hella duped. What? Whoa. Yeah, yeah. What it do was, you mean? Like, it was they, like, it was they like, took the money and they nothing. were advertising like a, you know, warehouse equipment or all kinds of it, like a, a warehouse type of, uh, you know, broker. Like some massive sale. Yeah, exactly. And then they had a bunch of st- equipment. So he ordered it and it was like a bait and switch type of deal. They sent him just like, Old, rusted, crappy weight, barbell, dumbbell stuff. It was nothing what? what he looked at. Yeah, he it. I mean, a pallet still showed up to his house, but it was like fucking junk. Wow. Shenanigans. That's yeah. you know that that the the scams on gym equipment have exploded. Oh, we. I mean, we talked about this off air. I don't think we talked about it on air that we were speculating that already. Like you know, with six hundred and what seventy percent increase in at home equipment sales. You know, there's a lot of opportunists that see that and are like, "Oh man, there's going to be some suckers that are going to buy into this for sure." Dude, I saw somebody totally. post on what is it on Facebook where you could buy things? That's uh, isn't there like a segment there where you could sell? Anyway, they have like a, a, a segment there where you can buy and sell stuff. Uh huh. Someone was selling a crappy home gym equipment. You know, it wasn't even Olympic barbell. It was the skinny barbell mm-hmm. with the little skinny weight. All of them rusty. The bench uh, had tape on it, keeping it from you know tearing in half or whatever. The dude was selling it for like two thousand dollars. Did you see the meme? What? The, did you yeah, see the dude. meme? The meme that's going around. Someone posted in our Damn, forum this. Uh, uh, it was a meme of you know like there was four. It was a quadrant, right? So it was four images. Yeah. Three of the images were like you know one was like a set of dumbbells, one was like a barbell, right? And it was like two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, you know, nine hundred dollars, and then a house in Virginia, seven hundred fifty dollars. That's how fucked up our market is right so now. It's all over the place. Yeah. That's so messed up, dude. You want to talk about stupid stuff uh, in Spain? You know. How they're, they're, they actually in, in, in Europe, Spain has one of the higher rates of 
COVID and they're trying to, you know, take care of the whole situation. But people are up in arms because the Spanish government there uh, did something a little controversial. What's mm. that? They sprayed their beach with bleach. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> they actually went through. What? They actually went oh, through. Oh, yeah. Let's wash that into the ocean they and actually uh, kill all the life. Went through and bleached, like just blasted the sand of this beach with a bunch of, with a bunch of bleach to prevent, you know, any viruses. I mean- isn't the sun, doesn't the sun kill yeah. viruses and stuff too? That, that was my thought. Yeah. Oh my God. So environmentalists are all up in arms because of all, they're killing how, all the- How could something like that even get passed to get done? <sighs> it, there's got to be somebody who had to-, to a sign brain idea. Yeah, like, sign off on that. Yeah, good idea. Let's fly some bleach over that. Just drop it on. Bleach kills everything. Exactly. How do yeah. we How do we solve this problem? Wait, yeah. doesn't bleach let's kill it? Let's just kill everything. Hmm. Yeah. Let's all drink it. Nuke it. Wow. Yeah, idiots. Wow. Anyway- so that and then there's this 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 these inventors that came out with one thing about uh, emergencies and scary situations is sometimes it pushes or oftentimes it pushes innovation through the roof. Apparently, there's this this surface that you can put on things that makes them makes them antibacterial for like years. So you can like cover a table in this. And this is just in a test, but they can cover it with the spray that then will make it antibacterial for like a year or scotch something card? like that. Yeah, I was no, going to say that. scotch card, Teflon. That's, <laughs> that's called stains. <laughs> yeah. That's not the same thing. Isn't that how scotch card works? I mean, uh, it's like yeah. the same thing. I mean, if spray those on my shoes. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. dog could shit on your couch and you're fine. I mean, I think that's like the same concept, no, right? No, dude, that's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was I uh, saw our good buddy uh, Jordan Syatt uh, posted something. Uh, in defense of Adele, and I, I, tr oh, dude, I, I tried to look it up, and I didn't know. Obviously, I, I saw her picture. She just, she's just like one of those people who like posts like once every six months, yeah. and everybody goes bananas. One of the most talented uh, singers. I've I seen her live. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. a, oh, absolutely. Her, wow. she, she puts on an amazing show. She yeah. like does this uh, whole thing where she like kind of like tell why I liked it so much was it, I wasn't like an Adele diehard fan or some shit. I just went to the concert. Um, <clears throat> and when I went there, I learned all about her through, through her singing. So between every song, she kind of tells her story. Oh, that's awesome. Just a really cool way. To, and she's so talented. She's someone who could sit on a stool and sing her whole concert and you're like blown away. Yeah. Very, time. very talented. Yeah. So here's what happened. It's going to get, you guys are going to get annoyed by it. But anyway, so she lost a ton of weight. Okay. Posted a picture. Good for her. Posted a picture of it. Okay. Uh, and people were congratulating her. Mm -hmm. Now other people are up in arms and saying that congratulating someone for losing weight is body shaming people because what? you shouldn't celebrate. Wait, is that when, still happening? Because yeah. come on, yeah. did, didn't this whole like pandemic kind of uh, put a, a, a backhand slap to that? No, no, apparently not. So people were like, congratulations. Oh my God, that's so great. And then other people were like, well, you shouldn't celebrate that because you're body shaming and that's not always a good thing and this and that. Can you what, what the hell's going on here? It's just that's I mean this needs to end. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm done. You know, <laughs> pandering to that stuff, bro. That's is just, it just going to get stupid. worse? Health is health. We're going to be the old guys that are talking about how ridiculous it is for. I mean, <laughs> we are already. Now. I know. I when we get like this, I feel like I'm like, man, I, I, do we just accept it, dude? This is the direction that we're going. It's no. going to be so. Pick your battles. That's not one. I honestly, you know what I think? Honestly, I think it's number one. It's a lot of virtue signaling, and what God, does that mean? We're fucking soft. Yeah, virtue signaling means you want people to think you're virtuous so you signal out. you're not actually virtuous i'll give you guys an example uh we have a friend who always talks about how we need to pay more taxes because it helps more people pay more so i i, I asked her i said well how much more do you pay in your taxes she's like well i i don't i said well you can you know there's a form in your taxes you can actually pay more if you want to of course you don't because you're virtue signaling you want everybody to think you're a good person reality is your actions actually show that you don't believe what you say. So I think people want to virtue signal and show everybody how, oh, yes, this is not, this is body shame. And then the other thing, too, is I honestly think people need to feel like they have a voice. And so they just, they find a way to be enraged over something silly like someone losing weight, which is insane to me. Yeah. So apparently you can't control, you can't congratulate her for weight loss <laughs> because- it's body shaming people. Yeah, that's horseshit. Yeah, what is the world? I posted from? that image. It came up on that. I know you guys follow. I think that Instagram, the historic Instagram page. You mm. guys follow that, don't you? Yes. Yeah. The, the, today's post they posted was the the jungle gym in like 1920. 
Oh, dude. Uh, I know cool. you've seen that image before. No kid would have survived. Today. Yeah. It's like 40 feet in the air, like monkey bars. <laughs> oh, dude. It's, it's so, oh, yeah. They had those vertical ladders yeah, and everything. I it's remember that. Such an ep- I posted it in my story today because I'm like, and I literally, so it's funny you bring this up. I mean, obviously, none of this was planned, and I, it was just on my mind. Like, God, we are just getting so soft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just, could you imagine if someone built that right now? Like, that would be insane. Bro, I'll oh, tell you yeah. what, when I talk, anytime I talk to my grandfather, I feel like the biggest like wuss of all time I anytime I, I my, my grandfather remember this is true now it's a 100 percent true story my grandfather at the age of 11 11 years old would sneak onto trains sometimes have to ride on the top of them at 11 years old travel to other towns try to sell food pot- potatoes because he'd have potato whatever try to make money get back on a train come back home and sometimes this was two days later to bring the money to his mom, yeah. 11 years old. So what I think is that as society gets easier and easier, we just all become weaker and weaker. And we're it's just society's so easy now that we have. Oh, I know. My grandpa was in two wars and then was stationed up in Alaska and got uh, frostbite on his foot. Yeah. And almost had to cut his foot off and his foot was just disgusting after that. You yeah. know, it's just like, what are we complaining about? Yeah. And now you have an ingrown toenail. Yeah. You have to take the day off work. <laughs> well, it's it's Ow. it's funny when you think about the unintended consequences from this is that, you know, we've made it easier for ourselves physically, but it's probably arguably mentally more challenging now because of that, right? But it's different. I'd say the mental challenges are still they, they were trust me, they were challenged back then. But the difference is it's a different type of challenge. I, well, they were challenged more physically, right? You know, not you being able to get men- not being able to get food. Sure, but you think that's you, mentally challenging. Yeah, but I mean, it switches you over to survival mode real quick. You're gonna die if you don't eat. I mean, that's a whole lot different than like pondering how I feel bro, about myself for months at a bro, time. Bro, my great grandmother had like 15 kids. Nine survived. You know what I mean? You just lose kids. Yeah. When you talk to them about that, I would talk to my grandfather about this. It's like, yeah, p- kids died all the time. Like if you had 10 kids. People would assume that you didn't have 10 kids. You had probably 13 kids, and one of them died from a fever one time. The other kid, oh, he, he fell down a hole and died, and this one over here to – you know, had some kind of weird disease we didn't know about. Like this just happened. Yeah, but I, I I would think that makes stressful. you more mentally resilient because of that. I think it that's, changes your perspective for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It makes you more mentally resilient when you've had to go th- through things like that. Where we <laughs> us today, like the wind blows the opposite direction and we get fucking freaked out. It's probably yeah. it's probably true. Oh, thank God you only lost a hand. Whew, come here, yeah. you're good <laughs> now. All right, go back to school. You know, we, we, are, we are turning into old men <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, listening we, to us talk right now. We, yeah. we totally are. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah it's, I, ha- it's happening when I talk to my kids about like school and stuff like that. I was talking to my son and I'm like, have you ever seen a, a fight at school? He's like, um, there w- almost was a fight. Once. You mean like yeah. a verbal one on like Facebook? This guy yelled. Yeah. Well, you know, at now, his friend. I know that there's schools where fights and stuff like that happen, but in just in my comparison from how I grew up to my kid, like my son's a freshman and he's never seen a fist fight at school. Really? Never seen a fist fight at school. Wow, that's I mean, that's great, but it's that that's I, I can't even imagine that. No, bro. Oh, we, was... we had batteries thrown at us. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking shit you not, dude. dude. Like one of my friends got punked and bullied so hard, they made him like strip down naked and climb up uh, the, the flag post in front of everybody. <laughs> wow. And then threw batteries at him? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was you messed school, up, bro. dude. It was messed wow, up. Wow, dude. We were freshmen. That's you like, know, that's what they did to freshmen. It's like yeah. Lord of the Flies. I mean, I got thrown in a dumpster as a freshman, but that was it. That was it, the extent bro, of it. Uh, I was what, so glad it didn't happen to me. By the time I was a freshman, I probably got into a dozen fights yeah. at school and after school and all that stuff even more than that it was just you know and i'm not saying it was better i think that's a bad thing but there are bad things that happen to you have the potential to teach you good lessons yeah and so by you know by the time i got older you know you become a little more assertive and stuff and so it's, i'm talking to my son about this so like he's like well how do you how do you like what if you hit someone what does that feel like i'm like dang you you have no idea yeah. You know, like what that what that's like, you know? Let's wow. sign him up for some boxing or yeah, something. Yeah, give him some jujitsu now. Yeah. That's the move. <laughs> yeah. Randomly push him down the stairs every now and then, you know. <laughs> Just throw some yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, challenges yeah. like Dude, I have a <laughs> random fact I've been, I've been like meaning to to lay on you guys here. Uh dude. So I, my mind was blown because I was like looking up all these like creature things, and there was uh this article about a tarantula and how it has its own pets. 
Tarantulas have their own it pet? It has a pet. Like, it, it keeps a frog around, and they have this, like, mutual understanding. What? That the frog will basically uh, eat all the insects around while it's it's laying its eggs. So this is all for, like, it's trying to protect its eggs while it's going out to hunt and do all this stuff. And so the frogs are eating uh, insects while the spider's out uh, hunting. So, what? wait, wait, wait. Yeah, how are they, how are they helping each other? Yeah, how are they helping each other? Well, so it, it allows the, f- the frog to stay there with him. But why? Protection. I don't know. <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, wait, I'm confused here. Okay, so there- This sounds a, like a shitty I know, deal. I know. this. So wait, it, <laughs> Maybe it gets eaten later. This, uh, it sounds like one of my son's child books I still can't figure out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand this. Where's no, it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the frog, like, like it allows him to live there I know you guys can relate his dad's right now, right? Yeah. The fucking book, you're like, what the fuck? This, this story doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's there. He gets he gets an abundance of bugs that come through there, you know, to protect them. Okay, so the frog stays there, eats bugs. Yes. The tarantula doesn't eat the frog. D- but why does the tarantula leave the frog cuz he's just cool with them? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the, the summary of the story. That's and this is a true thing. This is this is true. Thing. This is true. Did you find images? It's a, it's a frog pet. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, yeah, how's it a pet? How are they not just for homies? I don't know. Maybe yeah. they're friends, but it, it seems like it's a little bit, uh, you know, one sided. One sided. Like it could eat him at any minute. Now, when you read this, <laughs> were you? Did you have an edible? Yeah, before? I, <laughs> yeah. I, I probably you might did. Be re- you might have confused two stories. <laughs> no, I don't understand why you guys don't get this. <laughs> I, I guess okay, well because I'm trying to picture it. So first I of all, I understand what the mutual agreement is. Well, yeah, where do they like? First of all, uh, does tarantulas kill them. tarantulas live underground in holes? Right, right. And frogs are like in puddles and shit. Yeah, so, right? he goes so where to, they? Where I guess they, he goes to sleep there. Where are they chilling at? Okay. Thank you, Doug. Oh wow, these are like huge difference in size here. Yeah. Right? So the tarantula is massive. And Maybe like, he's just saving the frog in, in, to eat later. Well, that's what I thought, <laughs> yeah. but I guess not. Like he's he's cool with having. Around. It's almost like you know how that shark has like the cleaner fish mm. that that like cleans all the parasites oh, and stuff off of them. Oh, the the frog protects the spider's eggs. That's what I was saying. You did not explain that well. Did you understand that? <laughs> no. I, I understood it in my head. <laughs> no, no. I don't know why you guys aren't getting this. It's a little straightforward. You, hey, you, t- you tell it like the children's story. That's what it's, it's, it's just like three words, and I got yeah. to piece it together. You, you got to piece it together. This yeah. frog, so choose your own adventure. This frog better be careful. I don't trust spiders at all. I feel like they double cross everybody. I feel, I feel the same way, too. I know, right? I, I don't know. Like the first frog that was, you know, he was like cool with. Like, when did that happen? You have, yeah. to, you have like, to describe the the audience too that the difference in size is oh, like huge. It was like, a tiny yeah, frog. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, I guess I should have explained yeah, well, it was a tiny frog. Right. I was I was imagining like two the same size and like uh, how what are they how they work bad. together. Yeah. But so you guys are also not fans of spiders, not as much as me, but you're also what kind of spiders are the worst for you? Because the, the smaller ones. Really? So I used to have we used to have tarantulas the in ugly ones. where we grew up and uh, you know, I we they we come out and they'd be all over the place all the time. So in October is when they breed and you'd see them mm. everywhere. Yeah. So they would get in our house. And Tarantulas? They, yeah, they oh. don't they don't bite. They shoot their hairs in defense, right? So it's like nothing. So it's not they, even. They walk on roads and everything. Yeah, and we used to let them. them we used to yeah. let them crawl on us. Everything. It wasn't like I did not. I got used to them because we lived around them all the mm-hmm. time. And I realized you know, I don't like like little spiders you know yeah. that you can't you feel but you can't see like a tarantula is not sneaking up on you yeah. you see a tarantula like yeah. hey stand i don't like the ones that have like the big butts and they look like they're sweaty you know <laughs> they're, they're just like uh, and they're like sheen there's a sheen on them yeah. like, like a bright color you know You're like, oh that one's fucking venomous yeah Ven- I, don't- <laughs> Ven- yeah, I don't like the the sharp ones like when they're furry and stuff it doesn't look as bad but the ones that look all edgy oh sure. yeah have yeah, you yeah. seen the ones in australia like the videos of people catching them with a bowl. Well, they get big ones. Yeah. Fuck, they that, kill dude. birds and stuff. I right? sorry, that's yeah. Australia, but that's the only they, they reason. Got some why. gnarly spiders. Yeah, there if you for could, sure. if you could create a spider-free zone, then we might come down and do a live show there. <laughs> right, that <laughs> would until that us. can happen. Yeah, I don't know, forever, coronavirus, dude. whatever, dude. Spiders. Yeah, okay. agreed. One we more weird. That. One more weird thing. They yeah. found an antibody that combats the the COVID nineteen virus. You know where the antibody comes from? <laughs> Llamas. Snakes. Llamas. Oh. What? Yeah, llama. There's a llamas. We are produce- just trying everything. Wait. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Llamas. Llamas, <laughs> yeah, llamas produce apparently this antibody that is anti COVID. So they're examining this to see if What does that mean? Uh so if we inject theoretically, yeah. you have COVID. We inject you with llama antibody. Those antibodies neutralize the virus. You're okay now. 
What did like a scientist get spit on the face or something? And was like, hey, or the, are we really this. that aggressive that we're trying everything right now? I have, no, like, I have no idea. You handle the llamas, you go with the frogs. <laughs> yeah. How did that come up? John, write down all the animals that exist. <laughs> yeah. Test them all go out. down the list. We're going to need the We got down to too. hell. Yeah. 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 Something's happening. Yeah. It's working. Mm, alpaca didn't work. What else do we got? Llama? <laughs> Let's try that one. First question is from Just a Youngin. How do you train someone that only wants to commit to one to two workouts a week? Very carefully. Yeah, mm. that's it. Next question. Now, this yeah, is yeah. this. I I like this question. Here's why. When I was a new trainer, when people would tell me that they can only work out one or two work times a week, I literally would think that's a waste of time. And in, in, in fact, I know I turned away potential clients because they refused to commit to working out at least three days yeah. a week or four like, days a oh, week. Oh, you're not ready yet. Yeah. In fact, part of my strategy when I was a new trainer, I've always, you know, enjoyed, you know, discussing and being persuasive, right? So I get this person in front of me and I'd say, how many days a week can you commit to the gym? And they'd say, oh, just one day a week. And then the rest of the time, I, it, my goal was to persuade them to commit to three or four days a week because in my eyes, one day a week just wasn't effective. Now, I realized after years of doing this, literally five or six, five years maybe, that it was a terrible strategy. The strategy was terrible because the reality is if you're going from zero days a week of working out to any more than that uh, days of working out, that's a benefit. And on top of that, the, it's not just a physical benefit. It's beneficial because the way people develop long-term behavioral changes typically is a little bit at a time. So later on, my strategy became – hey, I can only work out one day a week. And I'd say, no problem. We'll design a workout around that and make sure it's as effective as possible. Now, as far as how would I train someone? Well, if I'm only training them once or twice a week, first off, a lot of it depends on the person. If I need to focus a lot on mobility work, which is usually the case with a brand new client, then most of my workout is going to be mobility work. As they progress and they need less and less of that special focus mobility work, more of it goes to traditional resistance training. If the person comes to me and they don't have tons of mobility issues, um, then I'll do a normal priming session or you know warm up, for example. And then I'm doing just a full body resistance training routine. And it's mainly revolving around compound lifts, you know, squats and overhead presses and rows and that kind of stuff. So I, w I would do exactly the same thing, except uh, where I guess another depends, right, is Sometimes somebody who says one to two times a week, it's because they're saying that like maybe just Saturday and Sunday, they have an option to work out. And so the days are back to back. So that's the only way I would split it. I agree with Sal. Someone who's uh, probably only able to commit to one or two days a week is probably also the clients that probably need a lot of mobility. So I, I would say that the bulk of my training would be, would be focused around their posture and, and dealing with any sort of chronic pain and, and those issues. Then the uh, <clears throat> other portion of it would obviously be a full body type of routine unless it's back to back day. So if it's, uh, if their two days are back to back, uh, then I would probably do a split where I went, uh, uh, upper body one day, lower body mm -hmm. the other day. And I was just, and all the only difference that I do is like, so let's say Sal's riding it the way he just said, where he, he has a, f a full body routine twice a week. He's probably going to do two to three sets of, uh, each body part on there. If I know that I'm only going to get the, that body part once that week, I might do four to five, right? right? So right. I might do four to five sets for every body part in the upper body on one workout. And then the other, uh, workout, I would do four to five sets in the lower body workouts. If I was, if I was going to go back to back workouts, if I had a minimum of two to three days in between the two days, then I would do exactly what you alluded to, which is a full body routine with, with mobility work is what that would look like. Yeah. A brand new client. I mean, this would be something I would definitely uh, start to build up uh, their specific mobility routine, their, their priming session, you know, ahead of time to, to really focus in on that because they can repeat that the whole rest of the week uh, as they, you know, have time available. They can, they can do that uh, at their house, but like it, I would I would slowly build on onto that with you know I'd take one compound lift and really try to uh, you know teach them the, specifically the mechanics and the technique involved and then have them practice it with light weight uh, you know if if that's the only amount of time I'm allotted and go through that for a couple of weeks until I could really build up you know uh, trust that they're going to perform this exercise correctly throughout the rest of the week. You know, I want to I want to add to something you said, Sal, that I think is important to reiterate for the trainers that are listening is. I too was like this where at the beginning I did not uh, 
I get frustrated with this client. I'd say, oh, you know, you're you're not serious enough, or if you want to, if you really want to see results, we need to be training at least three times a week if I want to see it. And to be honest, <clears throat> later in my career, I actually preferred this too. Totally. I mean, this is I would much rather. In fact, I found myself talking clients down that were like all motivated because they had something coming up where they're like, oh, I could give you five days a week. And I'm like, well, when was the last time you trained five days a week? And they'd be like, well, never, but I know now, now I have the time. Or And then I would actually end up going, you know what, let's start off with just one or two times, build a really solid routine and a good habit, and then we could start to build off of that. Well, also, I mean, you're teaching you're teaching them to fish. You're teaching them how to figure this out for themselves as well, like this type of a client versus somebody that's coming in and they're relying on you the entire time to just tell them what to do and be mindless uh, uh, you know, about the entire program of it. Like really spending the time to educate mm -hmm. them in that one to two days that you have available is going to be super worthwhile. Yeah, and you know, you can actually get two days a week, you can get exceptional results. Oh, yeah. That Doug worked out with me two days a week. Definitely. For the first, I think, year or two that we trained together. So Doug went from, you know, normal active guy to deadlifting twice his body weight. And there's this before and after picture that I've posted in the past where you could see his abs and all that. That was two days a week of resistance training. Now, the other days he was active on his own normally, but really it was only two structured workouts a week. You can get very far with two really, you, really good resistance training workouts. You can not only get really far, you can also maintain a decent physique at that. Totally. Uh, I mean, I'm training that right now. One, maybe two times of, of resistance training a week right now. Now, by no means am I impressive, but I also don't look like I don't work out. You mm -hmm. know, it, it, you can maintain, especially if you're if your programming is tight, and you are doing the, the the biggest bang for your buck movements, man. If you're deadlifting and squatting and overhead pressing and benching twice a week, uh, you're gonna have a, a pretty damn good one, one physique the, and base. That's one of the things I love most about resistance training. It do, it sends the signal, and then the every then the body does the work. So it's not like you have to manually. You're not manually building muscle there. Like with cardio, you have to manually burn calories. With resistance training, you're setting the gears in motion, and so if it's effective, it can be infrequent. And that's one of the hallmarks of resistance training. It's one of the reasons why it's one of the best ways to exercise, especially with our current busy lifestyles. Next question is from Rebel Hammond. Can you tell us your thoughts on the farmer's walk? They are so simple, yet I don't see a lot of people incorporating them into their routine. Yeah, I never, I never thought. I, I, I you know, Justin got, I love Justin, them. Justin got us. Oh, yeah. totally. I so I didn't have. Uh, I thought of farmers' walks like a trainer. You know, like okay, it's good for stability. It's good for hand strength. Strengthens the back. Um, it makes your body tight. Like I, the core core activation. It's great for that. Like I understood it from a trainer perspective, but I'd never understood it from an experience perspective because I never made it a part of a. I'd done them before, but the way I do them would be like occasionally if I'm going to have fun with somebody in our workout or whatever. Never train them. Then we wrote the MAPS Strong program. Now, MAPS Strong was a, a, a workout program that was strongman inspired. And a big part of strongman training is farmer walks, and that's part of their competition. Uh, you know, when they compete, they have to carry things in their hands and walk with them. Mm -hmm. So I worked my way up to almost 500-pound trap bar farmer walks, and I was training them consistently. And I could not believe – the muscle that I was building from doing them. It turned my whole body on. My traps, my back, the the muscles, of course, of the forearms and hands, shoulders, my legs got tight. I could feel my core working. Um, I developed a brand new respect for the farmer's walk, and I consider it to be definitely a top 15, if not a top 10 exercise that people can do. Yeah, much like when you bring up the story about uh, mail carriers in your family and like how that inspired you to, uh, you know, come up with trigger sessions and uh, saw what that did uh, in terms of muscle development. Uh, I, the same with me in terms of playing with certain types of athletes uh, in my career uh, with various sports that I was in. I always noticed there was a certain type of uh, you know, of athlete that just had this inner power, this inner strength that was far superior than the other athletes. And most, most of them that I had, had, you know, experienced and had met were from different farm towns and different places where manual labor was like really rigorous manual labor, uh, was, was a part of their, their growing up. And it, it's just one of those things, building up this work capacity and building up this, this, this work strength, um, it, 
it's it's something that I think a lot of people don't really recognize how that also like it, it really translates into your overall strength, which then you know propels you forward even more. So to add uh, that in as something that you can frequently work on and and do it at the right dose uh, to where it's not going to impede on uh, you know the intensity of your you, you know your regular foundational workouts. Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna get you uh, to be able to endure uh, longer bouts of really strenuous type work in the gym. Well, think about it like this. Um, we've made the case for isometrics on this podcast many a times, right? And I think that we all agree on the value of it and how undervalued is the isometric exercises are. Name me an, an isometric exercise that is as that is as intense. And I know farmer walks, you're moving, so people don't think of it as an isometric exercise. But think about from your traps down to your fingertips, down to your toes with a load, which most people can carry 200 to 500 plus mm -hmm. pounds. Name me something that is that intense isometrically on your entire body from neck to your toes. Yeah, right, and the posterior chain, which, again, we all try to you know voice that quite a bit. Like We don't consider uh, movements throughout the day to activate and uh, you know, gain connection with your posterior chain very often. And so this is, this is another way to really bring it's, that into your everyday life. It, it lights life. up everything, everything from the neck to the fingertips to, to the toes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Name me one part of the body when you're holding 500 pounds and walking 30 yards that is not completely everything's involved everything is connected everything is lighting at, a, at an intense level it's not like a plank it's also one of the most functional exercises i mean you are going to do that in life you are going to pick things up walk with them and yeah. hold them and so it's a very fun you get strong at farmer walks you just are strong well we right. and you've given the analogy that uh you know i've repeated a million times sal with the whole uh you know speaker and amplifier you know, I would argue that it's probably one of the the best uh, you know ways to invest in your amplifier. Yeah. Of all the, the central the, nervous system. Yeah. The, of all the things that you could do to really strengthen your central nervous system, uh, heavy farmer carries have to be up there mm -hmm. with one of the top three, if not the top one. Yeah, juice up them amplitudes. Next question is from Bong Rips and <laughs> Booty Licks. Oh, this is this what is a, what a we, fantastic name. We would be friends. Yeah. When you find the balance that you guys talk about with respect to diet, activity, and lean gains, would increasing cardio be more of a de detriment than a help? No, nah, it's it's a listen. Here's the deal. Okay, this is all what people always get confused. There's nothing <laughs> well, wrong. Well, maybe because of the first you know 500 plus episodes. Yeah, we, well, we had to counter this know, this abuse of I a know. form of exercise. Look, cardio cardiovascular activity can be very healthy. Anything overdone can be bad for you. That includes resistance training. Okay. So if you do more cardiovascular activity and it's appropriate for you, no, it's not going to be detrimental. It's going to make you it's going to make you healthier. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to improve your performance. In fact, there's a level of cardiovascular activity that will even help you build more muscle as long as it contributes to better health. Now, if your question is, is adding more cardio going to reduce the amount of strength and muscle I can gain at extreme levels? Well, that depends also. Um, it, that depends on the person. At some point it will because doing lots of cardio – is teaching your body to improve its endurance it's catabolic. and its stamina and making you more efficient where lots of muscle is not necessarily efficient with that type of stuff. So your body pairs muscle down. But there's nothing at all wrong with cardiovascular activity. Now, I like to communicate cardio like this with people. I prefer to not tell people to purposely go out to do cardio unless that's what they enjoy doing, in which case it's totally fine. But I'm, I'm talking to the average person and they're like, hey, you know, what should I do to optimize my health? The cardiovascular component of the workout is going to be injecting daily walks into their day. It's just part of your day. It's a behavior change rather than you know rather than making the time to go to the gym. Um, it's if you if you attach it to things that you do throughout the day, if it ritualizes it, which makes it more likely to continue. For example, if I connect it to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I always have breakfast. I always have lunch. I always have dinner. If I connect a twenty minute walk to each of those. I'm much more likely to be consistent than if I have to go away to go do cardio or separate it from everything else. So, but no, there's it's not detrimental unless it's too much for you. And what determines if it's too much? Your goals, your body, what else you're doing, your diet, your other the rest of your lifestyle. Well, yeah, or how much you're because this question you you say balance at first, which that's the key, right? The key is to have balance in it. it is yeah. yeah, I think it there it serve it serves its purpose to be in there. But then it says, would increasing cardio be more detriment? So if you're already balanced, right? Then. If you're balanced and you're already intermittently doing it, or it's something you're consistently doing on a weekly basis already, and you're asking to increase it more. 
Well, yeah. I mean, you it may not serve you when it comes to building muscle. That's, that's good. I didn't even catch that. It's like mm -hmm. so if every, if everything I'm doing is perfect, if I do some more of it, then what happens? It's not perfect. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. That's good. Next question is from Jay Canales, 140. What are some good strategies you guys have done or do when trying to study a certain topic? Oh, I, I talk about this all the time. I, you know, what's funny is uh, I, I learned what I'm about to communicate. I learned part of this when I first became a personal trainer. I started to realize that because I was teaching fitness to my clients, mm -hmm. I was actually learning it better. Because in order to communicate something, you have to really understand it well. So oftentimes when you learn something, you think, oh, I know this. Well, now see if you could teach it. The process of trying to teach it gets you to understand it more fully. So that's step number one for me is when I'm learning something, and, and I'm sure people around me can sometimes be annoyed by this, but when I'm into something, I talk about it. Mm, yeah. I, come, I debate about it. I discuss about it. Part of that is the learning process uh, for me. And it helps me really learn what I'm learning. The other side of this, the other point that I'll give is this. When you develop an opinion on a topic, uh, seek out an opposing opinion. And I don't mean seek out a crappy opposing opinion. Find somebody who you think has the best chance at changing your mind. Find somebody who does a really, really good job of arguing the opposite. And that will either help you develop your opinion more fully or you'll change your mind because they've done a good job. I don't even think you have to go that far. I mean, we're spoiled today. Um, this it's how I Google now. So if I have and, and name anything, uh, you know why why uh, eating meat is bad, why eating meat is good. I always just right right after yes. I Google what I'm interested in, I Google the opposite of mm -hmm. that statement. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're searching topics, mm -hmm. just do that. And what's so amazing about Google is the stuff that is that people are sharing that that is backed will normally surface towards the top and I'll go through, and I won't just read the first article on the top mm -hmm. I, and definitely pay attention if it's an ad versus something that has organically surfaced to the top of Google and I'll read that whole first page all five blogs and articles or studies related to that topic and I'll I'll put in maybe the the belief that I have or the question that I have and then I will then right afterwards Google the opposite that support or that is trying to support the opposite side of the argument and then read all the all, all that supports that and i think that everybody should train themselves to do this and i think it's so amazing that we have this resource now that this didn't exist just 15 20 years ago no, it was hard yeah. it was very hard you would have to seek out and a lot of times you end up reading a bunch of books that never got to your answer where you can literally just google specifically you know whatever it is that either confirms your bias and then the complete opposite and don't just stop by reading one. You know, I read a handful of articles and studies and blogs that support it. And then then I take it to the next level after I've felt like I've informed myself. Now I go have that health. And this is what I love about our relationship, because even though the three of us may seem like we agree all the time on the podcast, a lot of times we debate stuff all mm -hmm. the time. We talk and you probably heard more of it early on. But we, we do that, all challenge each other and hear opposing uh, ideas on it. I think that's the best way to learn. Yeah, I, li I like to uh, read or, or listen to uh, podcasts or, you know, audio books and then really digest uh, what I'm, uh, you know, I, I want to take my time really to, you know, to let it resonate and then see what those, the, the main points are. Then take that and then discuss it in a conversation and try and find holes in it, uh, and then go look for something yes. in an opposing argument. But I think um, there's there's like a time period for me to really, um, you know, sit and and meditate on you know what really uh, what was trying to be conveyed. And and for me, it might take a little longer uh, to then go to teach it, which is something I I definitely agree with. I think teaching it is where you really start to understand something, uh, because then now it's like I've taken the concept concept I'm a, I've, I've applied it you know I, I've meditated on it but now I'm trying to then uh, you, you know duplicate that by presenting that to somebody else and, and am I doing a good job in that or do I really not understand yeah, so so to put it simply seek out different ways of thinking about the same topic so what because people think thinking and they think it's all the same it's not you have thinking in your mind there's thinking on paper no joke if you write Try this. If you ever have an idea or you're, you're mad at somebody, you're pissed off at your friend, write it out. Write out what you feel. And what you'll find is you start to process things a little bit differently because it's a different form of thinking. Then talk about it. 
mm-hmm. talking about it is another form of thinking. And then there's another way of thinking where you debate with someone else. Now you're getting challenged on the way you think. Those are all different ways of thinking. And if you can take a topic and bring it through all of those, you're going to come out with uh, a lot of confidence in kind of how you feel because you've you've gone through all those different things. But this requires open-mindedness. When I seek out debates on topics that I'm learning, I seek out the PA. I typically do this online. I'll, I belong to these groups and I'll see somebody debating something. So I'll go on and I'll, I'll debate it. I'm, I'll typically find the person who does the best job. And I'm literally, my. this is what I'm saying. I don't say this literally to the person, but this is essentially what I'm saying. I'm saying, change my mind. You know, it would be like if you go to a, it's like if you, if you go to a car dealership and you tell the salesperson, if you can sell me this car, I'll buy it. That's literally what I'm saying to the person. Look, if you can convince me, I will be on your side. So do your best job convincing me. And then we go and we have this discussion debate. And if they fail, it's because I'm more confident in my opinion. And if they succeed, well, that's phenomenal. I'm now better off than I was before. The, the other thing this takes, and I think this is why people struggle with this a lot, is courage. It takes courage to put yourself out there and stand behind something oh, so and know that you may be wrong. It's a, But just you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with, hey, I, I think this is how I believe and this is what I've read and this, therefore I'm going to have this conversation or this debate with Sal. But people are so afraid to get proven wrong or to sound or feel like an idiot afterwards that they don't do that. And I think this, uh, this is a lot of... You know, in the, my early early twenties as a trainer, this is uh, a lot of my where my growth came from. Was I just wasn't afraid of that? I wasn't afraid to put myself out there. You know, even when it, when it, I knew I was talking to someone who was probably far more educated than I am, putting my ideas out there, getting them challenged, getting my paradigm shattered, probably being wrong, maybe even feeling like a little bit of an idiot. Mm-hmm. But okay, it's okay because you know what? Now I understand. Now I know, and now I'm smarter. Now we the, move what, forward. One place I can I can think of right now where that happened to me relatively recently was through the the the, the childbirth process. I thought up until I was a, a, an adult, I think I was 38. And I thought, man, childbirth is a super dangerous thing. It killed women for thousands and thousands of years and whatever. And we talked about it on a podcast. And I said, oh, yeah, you know, childbirth is a major killer. And, you know, thank God for modern medicine. And a midwife, now midwives are experts at child delivery. Um, you, some people think they're OBs are. OBs are actually surgeons. Midwives specialize specifically in, in, in natural childbirth. So this midwife is in our forum. She goes, Sal, you're, you're totally wrong. She's like... Actually, this is, you know, she gave me a lot of information. Now, I could have been like, screw you. And, you know, that's my, and I said, you know what? She's an expert. I want to see if she can convince me. So we had this long discussion. She sent me in a, a couple documentaries. I did some more learning and I realized I was totally wrong. And it feels good. It feels good. If you, but you have to be okay with being wrong. All right. But if you're okay with it, it takes courage, dude. Then you come out of it. And man, it feels good because now I'm not wrong anymore. Now I have a better yeah. opinion about something that I was wrong about for, for so long. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. You can also find the three best podcast hosts in the universe. We're the three amigos. On Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Oh, by the way, Doug is also on Instagram, believe it or not. He's got a fans-only page. Go to at Mind Pump Doug. <laughs> 